everybody. Welcome back. My next guest tonight is a Pulitzer Prize winner who served for eight years in the Obama administration and became the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Please welcome Ambassador Samantha Power. Hello. Nice to have you back. Great to be back. You're the first diplomat we've had on since the impeachment hearings when so many members of the State Department and the National Security Organization came out and spoke about their experience in dealing with the president and his interactions with Ukraine. Why do you think it's important that we hear from these, these career officials from the State Department? Well, for starters, because they tell the truth, and many of the political appointees have stopped doing that in ways that are, that are really disturbing. Um, but also, I think the, the window they offered into America, the diversity of the backgrounds of the different people who serve in those roles, whether in the intelligence community or in the civil service or the foreign service officer, officers who testified, it's such a, um, their professionalism, their patriotism, their truth-telling, their dedication to the rule of law rather than mm -hmm. to any particular individual, I think is a great advertisement for our diplomatic corps. And it's no secret that, that our diplomatic corps has been hollowed out uh, over a long period of time, but particularly accelerated in the Trump years. And so we're going to need to rebuild and rejuvenate that diplomatic corps because we've never needed diplomacy as much as now, really since the Second World War. We now have more conflicts happening in the world than at any point in more than 30 years. With China's rise, diplomacy becomes more, not less important because we no longer just get to take what we want and do what we want. We, you know, we really need other countries to come to our side, uh, particularly other democracies. And so I think those individuals, America really, it's, it's horrible the circumstances that brought them forward. But America got a taste of what happens behind the scenes and what I benefited from and any political point he benefits from, which is expertise and dedication to the Constitution and to principle. When you were at the UN, uh, uh, you had to deal with the Russians a lot. Um, you uh, got to know and become friendly with your uh, opposite number in the Russian uh, delegation. But you also were very tough with them. You made some very, very um, firm statements about especially their behavior in Syria. What, what do you think the last three years have been like for Putin and his ambitions to reestablish something like a Soviet or a Russian empire in Eastern Europe and extend his uh, realm of control in the Middle East, especially vis-a-vis -vis Trump pulling out of Syria? Well, I think President Putin's got a very high return on his investment, <laughs> let me put it that way, uh, <laughs> the investment that he made yes. in, in 2016. I mean... You for, mean the Ukrainians' investment, because the Ukrainians, I understand, actually <laughs> messed with the 2016 election. I mean, that's the president of the United States saying. Look, uh, NATO exists as a, an alliance uh, that was created, of course, to stand up to the Soviet Union, now has a new uh, lease on life, or should have a new lease on life because of Russian aggression both territorial aggression like that in Ukraine, but also all of the interference that Russia is carrying out in elections all around the world. Not so not just, just ours. France, Bulgaria, Sweden. Uh, Theresa May came out uh, in 2017 and said, don't you dare do it in, in the British election because of what had happened in Brexit. There's a British election tomorrow. Are the Russians messing with they, that? It appears that they are, but it, again, it's not clear exactly to the extent, but you've seen people come out and, and talk about social media accounts that have suddenly turned up. And what, they, what, what Russia does, is it's, it's almost the, the election is the bright, shiny object. But in our country, Russia has been interfering in our democracy since November 2016 as well. Russian-backed uh, social media accounts weigh in anti-vaccine, pro-vaccine. Pro-gun control, anti-gun control. In the debates on social media... Just to Russia, stir the pot. They, they see our cleavages, our divisions in our society, and they seek to widen them. And that's something President Trump is, do, is doing as well, and so they continue to work in tandem. Well, the, the book is The Education of an Idealist. Um, when an idealist is educated, how do they maintain their idealism? Because many people who start off as idealists can become cynics once they're exposed to the organizations and the apparatuses that they were trying to change. How did you maintain your idealism? Because I have seen time and again how much good individuals can do. I think I've, I've written the book in the way that I have in a very personal and raw way. We, and you know because you're Irish that uh, Irish people have trouble using the first person even in therapy. Uh, but I have managed 
to write a memoir uh, and managed to use the first person in the memoir in part because I really want to open up the sort of personal story because so many people right now feel like they want to make a difference and then that feeling of wanting to make a difference and knowing that the world is not as it ought to be is quickly swallowed up by the sense of I'm so small, I'm only one person. And what I saw, whether it was helping President Obama mobilize a coalition to end the Ebola epidemic in West Africa, getting the Paris Climate Agreement across the finish line in an expeditious way, knowing that we were late on climate and needed to move more quickly, getting political prisoners out of jail, watching journalists on the outside hold our feet to the fire and make a huge difference in terms of putting issues on the agenda that needed to be on the agenda. Uh, there, there's so much good to be done, and it need not be in diplomacy, although I do hope people will come back into that enterprise because it is so needed. There's, in our own communities, there are so many people in need right now. And I think you know what we, we, we tend to see in the news is the doom and the gloom. What you tend to see up close if you see people actually in public service is an integrity and intensity of purpose and, and a sense of satisfaction that you get from service. And so my, I, I'm left more idealistic, not less even if I'm, I'm looking forward to 2020. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. The book is The Education of an Idealist. It's available now. Ambassador Samantha Power, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Thomas Rhett.